Hi, did you know that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints had a gospel choir? I'm not talking about the Tabernacle Choir. I'm talking about a full-on gospel choir. Well, more on that and much more coming right up. Even in Chicago, God's gonna make you better. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Faith, Hope, and Music. I am Gaynor Brunson. And I'm Nathan Osmond. We're excited to bring you an all new weekly show where we bring you the latest in what's happening in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints locally here in Utah and around the world. We'll also bring you short, inspiring stories and fascinating historical places, people and artifacts. And we will be spotlighting inspiring people and featuring live performances from very talented artists and much more. That's right. This year marks the 175th anniversary of the first group of Latter-day Saint pioneers entering the Salt Lake Valley on July 24th, 1847. According to Utah.com, the first party to enter the valley included 143 men, three women, and two children. They traveled 1,300 miles on Foot. What's, what's the longest you've ever walked on Probably foot? on my mission. I walked <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So I feel their pain, but I had ancestors that were part oh, of yes. this valley. Yeah, when they came here, it's amazing. I love history, but uh, the pioneers are near and dear to my heart. Oh, indeed. Well, it's amazing what they accomplished. Well, there are some guys that traveled from Nauvoo in a wagon all the way to this is the place monument in Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. I just happened to be there as they pulled in and took some video for you. <laughs> How are you doing? How you doing? This is awesome. I bet. We've had a long go. How long you been doing this? May 23rd, we started in Omaha, Nebraska. Wow, and when did you get here? Right now. Right now. We just got here. Over 1,100 miles. You did 1,100 miles? Yeah. Okay. And last September, we did another 315 going from Nauvoo, Illinois to Omaha. And this year, it's the 175th anniversary when the Mormons went to Utah. So we started in Omaha, pushed it into Utah. Wow. We're tired. Way to go. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, so that was that was quite a trek that guy did. What That's, a good attitude. He oh had. man, they must have been so excited to pull into this valley. You mean them with that wagon just now? Well, not just them, but the actual pioneers, <laughs> right. you know. Both of them, right. Oh yeah. I can't imagine walking that distance. You know, Brigham Young sat up in his wagon. He was not feeling well. He was very ill. Okay. But when he looked down and he saw the Great Salt Lake, he saw Enzyme Peak there. He had seen that in vision. Joseph had actually shown him that in vision. That's one of the indicators that he oh, knew that wow. this was the right place. See, a lot of people don't realize that's the actual words that Brigham said. He didn't say this is the place. He said this is the right place. How come we didn't have it, this is the right place? You know, I don't know why. It? Maybe it just sounded better on a plaque, but <laughs> the right, right was used when he sat up in there. He knew this was the right place for the saints to, to settle and to build the temple of their God where they wow. can worship God freely, you know, and not be persecuted. And yeah, that's, that is just all incredible. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but two days before Brigham Young entered the valley and made the famous saying, this is the place, he sent three enslaved black men ahead to prepare the way. The leader's name was Greenflake. Finally, a monument was built to honor him and all of the other black pioneers. The unveiling of that monument took place on Friday, July 22nd. 175 years to the day of when those three entered the valley to prepare the way for Brigham Young and the rest of the saints. There it is, next to the This is the Place monument. What a great place to have that. Wow, what great history, and we need to know this history, you know? And speaking of history and artifacts, talk about this historical building part of our show. We have a special little feature on a building that is 155 years old, the Tabernacle on Temple Square in Salt Lake City, where it has been the home of the famous Mormon Tabernacle Choir, now called the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. In 1892, it was the largest assembly hall in the United States. Isn't it remarkable that just 15 years 
after the saints were driven out of Nauvoo. Wow. I mean, we're talking survival time. And they started to build this building. Can you imagine Amazing. the faith they had? Oh, and it's, 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 it's a wonder of the world. I mean, the way they're able to build it with the acoustics, you can drop yeah. a pin, a needle in the front of the room and you can hear it in the back row. It's incredible. Oh, well, I was there recently at the Tabernacle. Really? And I was able to take some cool video footage. So, you know, after all these years of watching the Tabernacle Choir and General Conference, I've seen the leaders of the church come in and out of these doors. And I've always oh, wondered what was behind those doors. Yeah. So how would you guys like to see what's behind those doors? What do you say we go through these doors right here first? How cool. The underground, let's see where this goes. Here we have stairs that go underneath, down below. Here we're going underneath the tabernacle. <laughs> Talk about behind the scenes. Yeah. Look at this. Here we are. There is the choir and the orchestra. Boy, all this history along the walls here. You have this hallway and pictures. Man, look at this. A lot of history here at the tabernacle. You have them. Oh, cool. And there are titles. Let's see. Wait a second. Is that Ed Sullivan? So, was he here? And all these famous people, and uh, oh my gosh, the most famous! <laughs> there we are. Yes. Oh, Alex, get ready to perform out there. That's right, with the gainer. Alex has been here so many times. Probably, I don't know, must be a thousand times. A thousand times, you eight, think so? I've been here uh, eight years, I was in eight a choir. Years. So, we'd walk this. Oh, yeah, you'd walk this. This is Sunday, a. Sunday, Thursdays, Sundays, Sundays Thursdays, and Thursdays. Every oh. week. For wow! Eight years. Wow! Do you miss it? Do I you... do miss it. Yeah. Well, but which which like... do you like better, the tabernacle or the uh, conference center? Oh man, uh, the singing at the conference center is is amazing. Only because yeah. of the crowd capacity. Oh but yeah. But here is the history. Oh yeah, there you know, is history. I mean, you had you've had uh, five presidents who've spoken here of the United States. Oh, I didn't know that. Five yeah. presidents. I think some of them you'll see on here. Yeah. I'm um, gonna go through and, and videotape yeah, each one of these. See, they'll show. They've got a couple of presidents that were here. I know John Spoken, Kennedy was John here. Kennedy, yeah, and there was a few others, though. But, um, wow, this yeah, is... Some of them might actually be up on these... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through yeah. all these and, and videotape it. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Right? That, yeah, this, th there's nothing like this building, right? I mean, no, it's so historical. It's just, the history is just incredible. Wow. I bet you have a few stories to tell, don't you? <laughs> no, no, yeah, not, not too great. All those years. Yeah. Are you in that picture? No, the one downstairs I am. Oh, but you can still so hear good. the ambience ringing as I came here yeah. in that hallway. So also, guess who else was at the tabernacle? Who? Helen Keller. What? I mean, it seems like there's so many uh, things we don't know about the tabernacle and who's been there. Helen Keller visited Utah and answered questions in the tabernacle on Temple Square. After answering questions about being deaf and blind and learning to read, type, and talk, isn't that amazing? That Keller amazing. had a question of her own. Famous Mormon poet Emma Luthane recalls being at the tabernacle when Helen Keller asked for the President Grant. This is her quote. There was a flurry of getting up from the front row and President Grant walked up the stairs to the stand. She re reached out her hand. <clears throat> she reached out her hand and he took it. I would like, she said, to hear your organ play your famous song about your pioneers. Wow. Can you? <laughs> That's amazing. Can you imagine that? Now, I would like to remember hearing it here. Beautiful. Isn't that just, isn't that just amazing? Keller placed her hand on the. Mm, Keller placed her. <clears throat> Keller placed her hand on the organ while the organist Alexander Schreiner played 
Come, come ye saints. Feeling only the vibrations from the magnificent instrument and organist efforts, she stood there in front of the congregation. She stood there in front of the congregation and tears flowed. Wow, she was a special lady. That's the deal. Blind, that's, are you kidding, man? Dumb, that's... you know, she couldn't hear. She was deaf. Oh, yeah. And yet she could feel the vibration and the spirit of that song. The fact that she knew about Come, Come, Ye Saints. Yeah. You know, that just shows she did a lot of research. What she a did. smart lady. Wow. You know, one thing that Helen Keller said that I absolutely love. What? Life is short and unpredictable. Eat the dessert first. That's a real really? Helen Keller quote. Yeah. Talk about an attitude. Oh, I like her thinking, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, wow. now let's talk about the LDS Gospel Choir. Okay. So, yes, you heard me right. The LDS Gospel Choir. The Deborah Bonner Unity Gospel Choir became the LDS Gospel Choir at the NAACP luncheon where they performed. At, the, at that luncheon, they were announced as the LDS Gospel Choir. How cool is that? Yeah, so they were in there rehearsing. This is the rehearsal. Nice. So I kind of pan out there. We're in the top floor of one of those buildings. Oh, how cool. That's awesome. Yeah. But here they are rehearsing for the 50th anniversary of the Genesis uh, firesides. Wow. So many yeah. talented people and members of the church, and I'm so grateful that the uh, Deborah Bonner, the gospel, Unity Gospel Choir, is out there doing what they're doing. Yeah, and they dedicate a lot of time, and it's a lot of work. And I'm always blown away. Deborah and Harry do so much work. They're amazing people. Wow. And of course, our own Tabernacle Choir. You know how many hours they rehearse as well. Oh but yeah. But they're known the world over, and music is such a powerful tool in teaching the gospel. You know, our Heavenly Father loves music. He says that the song of the righteous is a prayer unto me. That's right. Will be answered upon their heads. That's so, right. Thank you for all those talented singers out there, and of course the organists, yeah. the choir. There's a lot that goes into there. I think we even got our own our own orchestra, at Temple Square. Uh, that's how true. cool is that? Yeah, that, that, I'm a big yeah. Mac Wilberg fan. He's an amazing talent in the church. And again, all these people donate their time, and it's a lot of work. That's right. It's a lot of sacrifice, but you know what? Good people. They're doing a lot of great missionary work. Well, this work. church is known sacrifice from day one. That's right. Wow. Absolutely. Well, up next, we have an interview with a television producer that produced a number one hit national TV show. As a matter of fact, he was also in a famous group. Really? <laughs> you recently interviewed him. And he happens to be your father. Oh, that's right. And you happen to interview your mother as well. That's right, right here on this very that's set. That's right. And uh, let's take a look at the interview. Cool stuff, though. Take a look at this. Love it. Uh, free, but I knew he was an Osmond, and I expected him to be um, you kind of... You didn't know about the Osmonds, though. Well, that. I knew you were an Osmond, and I had heard you on the radio, uh, but I'd never seen him perform. But I expected him to be uh, kind of a conceited, you know, self-centered. I expected that. And so I didn't pay a whole lot of attention because that's what I thought he would be. But after our first date, I learned differently, that he was really a genuine, wonderful guy. And after about six months, we decided it was the right thing to do to be married. Oh, but you jumped over some fun stuff. Oh, there's a lot of fun stuff in there. There's. <laughs> Your I, I my made, grandma, your mother, asked you what? What if you... On the drive home that night, my mother said, what if you would marry him? And I was, I was taken back. I was like, really, Mom? I, I just met him. How can you say that? But uh, anyway... Mother's it, it, intuition. It, it was a 
I guess a little prophecy. I like her mom. mother Ruth. She was a great lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you started dating. How long were you engaged? About two weeks. <laughs> Not long, because he was doing a world tour, and that was the only way to go and be with him. And mm. so we announced it, and he went to Vegas to open his show, and we didn't see each other that whole time. We went down to Los Angeles in Dick Clark Productions, and Dick Clark himself made through a press conference because he knew that I wouldn't go on the tour without being married with her. She can't go as my girlfriend. Uh, and so he, he announced it and all the press came and we went up on the, the, the lawn of the Los Angeles Temple, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Took our pictures there with the fancy bushes and pictures, flowers. But uh, I, we, we, we got engaged and then she took off for Wyoming. And you tell about what happened. Well, he went to Vegas to open his new show and I went to Star Valley to a family reunion. And I announced to my whole family, I'm getting, in, I'm getting married and this is who I'm marrying. And my grandma said, you know he's your cousin. And I said, no, I don't know that. She said, it's okay, there's no blood. Um, his grandma Osmond married my great uncle after they had lost their spouses. So my mom and his dad are first cousins, step. Take yes. us to July. 16th, 1974. So he, fi he flies in our wedding day. He did a show, two shows the night before, and the next morning he flies in with his family into Provo Airport. We hurry and go up to the Provo Temple. We were married and sealed, come out and take a few pictures, and we have to get back to Vegas. He's got two shows to do. So he squeezed a wedding in between shows. Her mom and, and dad and all her aunts and uncles and kids and friends said, well, what happened? Because we just took off for Vegas. It was like, they're just left with a lip lip. They didn't know what to do. <laughs> but we did have a reception five weeks later. We brought them to Vegas. And yes. they did come to Vegas and saw the, the show. I had never seen him perform until we were married. And that was just very, very impressive and a little overwhelming. I had no idea he could do the things he did. But you did two shows that night at the Tropicana yeah, in Las Vegas, Yeah, for the Nevada. next few weeks, and then went to England for three weeks, back for a reception. We were only home for two days, long enough to do that, and then back out on the road again. Tell them about the reception. While we were in England, Anne Margaret had a big show to do. Mm. And one of her celebrities fell out of her taping of her show, and so what happened? She called and said, Osmond Brothers, will you please fill in? I need your help. So they all come to me and said, can you call your mother and move the reception one day? Mm. Uh, you don't know my mom. <laughs> we called my mother and she's like, absolutely not. Caterer's book, invitations are sent, everything is set. And so Anne Margaret had to adjust. So we worked and all night, through the night for her in England to, to fill the spot to help her get out of a tight jam. Well, I don't blame my mom. Yeah. That was a lot of work she went through and put together. And so we got home and we had our reception. And you were there. When, and I was there when you first announced it to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we were all sitting in the dining room table with the yellow back chairs, and um, you said, I have something that's called what? Uh, many Sons. Many Sons, MS, <laughs> right? But you says, I might have MS, but MS does not have me. You says, I'm not going to die from this. I might eventually, maybe someday, end up in a wheelchair. You're still not in a wheelchair. You're no. almost 73. Well, I have a philosophy, you become what you think about. Mm -hmm. If I think I'm sick, I'll be sick. Mm -hmm. If I think I'm well, I, I do better. And I'm, I, I'm going now for many, how many years have I had it? 35 years. I may have MS, but MS does not have me. It's my father, you can do it. Mm -hmm. That's the, the army, you can get tough. I came up with a slogan for the army. Be tough, target what's the problem, understand what it is. Focus and fight, and those letters make the word T-U-F-F. -F. And that's been a slogan, of, you can do it, Alan. Mm -hmm. And I was tough at it, and I did it. Yeah, you went on Larry King's show, and you said, it's not the disease that gets you, it's the lack of hope. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That was some incredible interview. That was special. Wow, your dad and your mom are pretty amazing. That's right, I love so, those two. Yeah, that's so cool that you, uh, you, you, know, you took, took some time out to interview your mom and dad. Well, thank you for adding them as part of the show. You know, it's, uh, our, my parents are very special, and to have the opportunity to sit right here on these couches and get to ask them questions about their lives and, and how important the church is to them, you oh, know, yeah. it's so 
So powerful to have that. Thank you for that. Yeah, and your dad actually spends a lot of time online. Uh, He's like him. a cyber missionary. All he wants to do is baptize the world. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, that's great. And people know that. You know, people that follow him on Facebook and everything know that he is not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just like Romans one sixteen talks about. He loves that scripture. He is one proud member of this church and, what, and loves to share it. He doesn't want to scripture. come off you know, overzealous, you know, oh, but wow. he just wants to share what's brought us the most joy in our lives, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, I want to hear that scripture. Yes, <laughs> Romans 1, 16. Can you quote it? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love that. And I just, oh, just talking great. about that on a Facebook Live coming over here. Oh. You know, every day I do Facebook Lives and we can all share the gospel in our own way. Oh, right. You don't have to have your own television show to do that. You know, you have the ability to share what the church is putting out on social media. There's so many ways that you can share your testimony, but the greatest way to share your testimony is the way that you live. Wow. I always tell my yeah. children, if you, were, uh, if you were accused of being a Christian, would they have enough evidence to convict you? That's I sure correct. hope so. That's great. And you know, when we moved to Branson Center and people told us that we weren't Christian, you know what my oh. response was? Oh. If the way I live my life isn't proof enough that I'm a Christian, then shame on me. Oh, wow. That's pretty heavy Period. duty. You just yeah. got to speak up for the Lord, and you know what? Your actions will speak a whole lot louder than your words. Wow. But music does a great job in spreading well, the gospel. Well, your dad, you wrote the album, The Plan, right? He sure did. And he was totally into just preaching the gospel. But you know what? He said, I didn't write the album. He says, I had a ghostwriter the Holy Ghost. Well. He says, I got up at two in the morning and I watched words come out of a pen. Oh, are you kidding me? No, That's and then amazing. he got the chance to play that album for Harold B. Lee, the prophet of the church. Oh, he did? Yeah, and they warned him. He says, okay, President, this is, this is some rock and roll music right now. He loved it. He Especially loved it. Especially the song, Before the Beginning. And he said to my father, he looked him right in the eyes, he says, now that was inspired. Really? Yeah. Before the beginning, how does that Be go? Before the beginning. Yeah. We were living oh so far away from here and we called it oh. home but didn't stay. We knew that we could leave one day and cry and you hear this baby cry. It represents yeah. birth, you know, before the beginning. We were willing to lay aside who we had been, to take a chance to slip away or make it back to home one day. What for? And then the, cho the chorus sings, ever since we came to be with the plan we learned to see, we alone will guide our destiny. You know, it was that free agency that we fought for wow. before we came here. But as he listened to those words, the prophet of the church looked my father in the eyes and he says, now that was inspired. Wow. So I just told people on my Facebook Live, go listen to it. It's an amazing album. It was a rock opera at the time. In fact, you know, it was like their Sgt. Pepper. It was like the wall for Pink Floyd. But for the Osmonds, it was the plan. In fact, that one baptism, I did a fireside in that tabernacle we just showed yeah. with Paul Dunn back in the day. Oh. He says there's been over 50,000 documented baptisms just from that one album alone. Isn't that amazing? Just from that one album. Just from that one album. You see, they released it right after their Crazy Horses album, which is their biggest rock album of all time. And since they didn't have the opportunity to actually do traditional missions, you know what my father said? He says, brothers, this is when we got to do our missionary work. Because so everybody's going to buy the next album. So my father had that plan to write the plan. And did you know, wow. I just told the fans this just a few minutes ago, that when they were writing the plan, they stayed in this hotel and the hotel caught on fire. Caught on fire, wow. And it burned all of the work that they had worked on. Somebody was trying to stop that from coming out. And my yeah. father had to recreate and remember and try and rewrite. So he rewrite. had to remember everything. He had to rewrite everything that he could remember. And they wrote new songs, too, that were supposed to be on that Plan album. But wow. it's a very powerful missionary tool. And I'm so grateful that uh, they were able to utilize their talents. They were all set apart as 70s. Did you know that? The Osmonds. I, I, I knew something about mm -hmm. them. It was 70s. As, as and missions, they've never been released from it. So my father really? considers himself still called who was to go this, out and share the gospel. Who was it that set them apart? I would have to find out who it was. Was it President Kimball? Or President was it? Kimball was very or close. Or Paul Dunn. Did Paul you know Dunn. that President Kimball actually dedicated the Osmond Studios? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? We dedicated yeah. these studios as well. That's right. You know, to, and we promised our Heavenly Father we, we'd do projects like this. Right. To help further the work. There you and look, go. here we are here doing we are. our part. That's great. I love it. It's down my alley, down your alley. That's right. <laughs> you're just, you're amazing, Nathan. You got oh, all thanks. this information. You, oh. you know scriptures, you know quotes. Well, you That's know, I just love the awesome. gospel and I love sharing it with people. And, you know, when we lived in Branson, Missouri, that was very difficult to live in a state where it was legal to kill a member of our church <laughs> up until 1978. Oh, Governor man. Boggs' extermination order, which was one of the most unconstitutional pieces of legislature ever passed, was wow. still on the books. But... Brother Holderby in our ward found it, discovered it. Oh, he, he was got in your it removed. Ward? He was in our ward. 
he told me that story. So I was like, how cool is that? But a lot of missionary work has happened out there in the Shomi state. In fact, you know, even though we went through a lot of persecution, there was a night when uh, we got a letter from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was written to them from the Council of the Churches in Missouri apologizing for all of the persecution really? that they had put members of our church through in the show me state and welcomed with open arms i'm quoting this now into the council of the churches we are now christians in missouri how wow. cool is that a marvelous wow. work is coming for we went from uh not being legal to kill latter-day saints to being recognized as christians in, in the council <laughs> of the churches of missouri how cool is wow. that wow so yeah, out of small things ways. proceedeth that which is great. Amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is all amazing history. I love history. Okay, yeah. So, well, we have a little treat yes. for you. Your Uncle Merrill Woo! just did his last performance in the United States yep. in April of this mm -hmm. year. At that performance, he did something really cool. You know how the Tabernacle Choir ends each uh, music in the spoken word mm -hmm. with God be with you till we meet again? Oh, yeah. Well, Merrill went ahead and he sang this to the audience. I thought it was the coolest thing. So he basically, after the concert was done, he went ahead. It was really quiet. And he got up there and sang, God be with you till we meet again. So take a look at this video. Wow, let's watch this. And look at this. The audience is just standing there. So they're all quiet. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel's guide uphold you With his sheep securely fold you God be with you till we meet again Till we meet Till we meet Till we meet at Jesus' feet Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. Goodbye, everybody. Isn't that amazing? Wow. He's a good missionary, you know? Yeah. He's yeah. always been one to speak up, you know, for the Lord. So that's a really special song to him. And to hear the song, God be with you till we meet again in Las Vegas. Did you know that the Mormon pioneers helped to settle Las Vegas? Yeah. We settled a lot of places besides just Utah. I mean, that's we're talking right. San Diego, all sorts all of right. places. We, had, we knew how to settle places. Wow. And I think that is so cool that he got to sing that in Las Vegas. Oh, that's great, man. Well, that's some cool information, Nathan. Yeah. Wow, you're in the middle of all that. Oh, just part of that's... a big family. They tell you one in a million, they mean it. There's over a million <laughs> Osmos out there. I'm just one in a million. Okay, that's our show for now. Hope you will join us again for our next show where we will be bringing you more interesting, historical, and inspiring stories. And don't forget about music. That's right. We want to leave you with a quote. And this is found in the Book of Mormon. This is about faith. This is a great definition of faith. And now, as I said concerning faith, faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things, Therefore, if ye have faith, ye hope for things which are not seen, which are which true. Are true. Mm -hmm. I love that. We're talking scripture mastery right there, y'all. That's Alma, baby. That's right. Woo! That's in the Book of Mormon, and that Book of Mormon is free to anyone that wants one. That's right. So make sure you request one today at hearhim.org. And you can also go to churchofjesuschrist.org. Your dad wrote the theme, the outro theme of the Dining Marie Show. That's right. May tomorrow be a perfect day. May you find love and laughter along the way. May God keep you in his tender care till he brings us together again. Can we just sing that together for a while? Sure. <laughs> May tomorrow be a perfect day. May you find love and laughter along the way. May God keep you in his tender care. Till he brings us together again. Good, Good night, night, everybody. everybody. <laughs>